Hello everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I'll be showing you my complete iPhone 6 Plus setup. So the case I am using is the Spec Candy Shell Grip. This is the same case I've been using for several months and I really do like it because the rubber portions on the back give you, as the name of the case suggests, a ton of grip and it also adds some extra protection as we do have a dual layer design. So this white case here is polycarbonate while everything else is rubber and TPU. So we have that ladder material on the inside then of course on the outside we have not only the black portion here but also the polycarbonate shell to help keep everything protected as for the screen protector i'm just using a cheap kai lufu anti-glare screen protector on the front took me over an hour to install this screen protector the other day it's been a while since i installed the new one and i just want to get alignment perfectly without any bubbles and to do that sometimes it just takes a lot of time which in this case it certainly did Let's go ahead and turn it on and start at my lock screen. So immediately you can see that I have a couple of different jailbreak tweaks installed. One of them is called Zeppelin. As you can see, I have a different carrier logo in the upper left, which is for T-Mobile. And I also have, I forgot what this tweak is called. I think it's called Atom, but it allows you to quickly go straight to different apps from your lock screen directly. So if I wanted to open Spotify, I could just drag this over there, use Touch ID or the passcode to unlock, and it opens straight to that app. If I wanted to go to settings, and of course you are able to customize the apps that you have and where they are located. If I wanted to go to settings, I just go over that one, unlock like I normally would, and it goes straight into the settings app. Now that we're done with my lock screen, here is my home screen. I have two rows of icons like always, messages, calendar, photos in the top, in addition to an extra folders that has some extra Apple apps. In my second row, I have a jailbreak folder, which has all of my jailbreak icons, including Cydia, Display Recorder, which lets you record your screen into a video file, iCleaner, which lets you remove different app caches, which can definitely free up quite a bit of space. I also have iFile to browse any file on the iPhone's file system. And I also have MyY, which I use for creating a 5 GHz Wi-Fi hotspot, because the personal hotspot feature built into the device only makes a 2.4 GHz network, which can be very slow if you're in an area with a bunch of other 2.4 hotspots. Next, of course, I have the icon for the Pangu jailbreak. And I also have ProTube, which I use to watch YouTube videos. I don't use the YouTube app. I don't use the mobile YouTube interface either. And the main reason I use this is because it lets me choose the video quality and it doesn't have it autoplay whenever I open a video. So I could just slide up, go to stream, gives me the different quality choices all the way up to 720p at 30 FPS. And just like that, we are watching this video. So that is what I use ProTube for, and it also lets you download the videos directly to your device. Next up is the 3G Unrestrictor icon, which lets me use my mobile data for anything I want. So I can use it for iCloud backups now. I can now download apps more than 100 megabytes in size. I've downloaded massive apps over my data connection because it's unlimited. It's faster than my Wi-Fi connection, so why not just use that all the time? And that is basically 3G Unrestrictor. In my next folder is my games folder. I have Carmageddon, Crazy Taxi, Crossy Road, Flight Control, Fun Run 2, Game of Life, Osu, Peggle Blast, and the Steam mobile app. I really don't play games on my phone that much, but when I do, there's a good chance it's either Crossy Road or Fun Run 2, or for whenever I have more time, I'll play Carmageddon. So that is my games folder. In my social folder, I have Facebook, Instagram, Skype, Swarm, Tweetbot, and Twitter. Now the reason I have the stock Twitter app is because I use that for Twitter notifications. So I have certain accounts that I receive notifications from whenever they tweet something, such as news. So if I just pull down Notification Center and go, so there's one right there. So it says something about Brian Williams from NBC News. So that's an example of what I use the Twitter app for. I used to use Fast for this, but it's 20 bucks a year. The Twitter app is free so you see where that is going. One more folder I have is for others. So I have Amazon, eBay, File Explorer, which lets me browse file shares on my computer or any other network device that lets you access the file system directly. It also supports Dropbox and other file sharing sites. I do use Google Maps. I try to limit how much I use Google services. If any of you have been following me for a while, you know what that's about. But I still use Google Maps because there's nothing else that really comes close to it. I would use Bing Maps, but they don't have an app for iPhone yet, or at least one that's any good. 
I also have the 99.5 Kiss Rocks app, Mountain Bike Pro by Runtastic, T-Mobile My Account, and the NASCAR mobile app. Also the Opera Mini browser, which I use for whenever I happen to be on a really slow internet connection. Opera just makes things so much faster. Even a GPRS signal, which is a step below edge, websites can still load in a pretty decent time when using Opera Mini. Next is PayPal. I also have Shazam, Sling Player, Speed Test, Team Viewer, TV Guide, as well as Time Warner Cable TV. In my dock, I do have five icons, including Phone, Mail, Settings, Spotify, and Safari. Whenever there's a Firefox client for iOS, I'll probably go ahead and try that out, but until then, I'll just stick with Safari. I've also been using Spotify for several months now, and I really do enjoy it. It's definitely worth the $10 a month to get access to all the different music libraries that they have, in addition to playlists, shareable playlists, and a bunch of other items. It's definitely more of a better deal, I think, compared to Apple Music. There are just a lot of small things in Spotify that I like, such as lyrics and Spotify Connect, but that's a topic for a different day. Let's go ahead and open settings. Actually, let me go ahead and go to Cydia so I can show you each of the packages that I have installed. Here are my sources if anybody's interested. And here are all of my packages. I have Activator, which lets you set up different gestures for different things. So example, I can use four finger pinch from anywhere to lock the device. I think that's the only thing I really use Activator for. I also have AFC2, which lets you access the file system directly through USB, pretty much as the description there says. I also have Atom, which I showed you at the beginning. I have OXO3 in addition to OXO Legacy Edition. Now the only thing I'm using from OXO3 is the left corner gesture, which lets you close apps, as well as the right corner gesture, which lets you switch to them. Of course, my iPhone just decided to crash, which has been happening more and more lately. I've been on this version of iOS for eight months now, and everything for the most part is fine, but there are occasional crashes like this. That's actually the third time this has happened today. So back to Cydia. Let's go ahead and do the bottom right gesture again. And this is what it looks like. It's just an alternative to switching between applications. As far as OXO LE goes, that's what this is. To me, this is just the best multitasking implementation you can add to a smartphone. It's accessible with your finger. It works in both orientations. It's quick and smooth and fast. Everything just works really well in OXO LE. I just really love it. That's the number one reason that I jailbreak currently. I do have two winter board themes. I'm using Icon and Iris. I don't know which set this is, so let's go into the settings app and take a look at my winter board options. So the theme I am using is Iris. Next up is CC settings, which adds different toggles to your C uh, control center thing here. I also have Display Recorder installed, which I mentioned earlier. And I also have Fake Time Warner installed, which lets you bypass the jailbreak detection in the Time Warner Cable TV app. I also have Full Force installed, which lets you take applications that aren't properly optimized for the iPhone 6 Plus and scales them to the rest of the screen as if they were native iPhone 6 Plus applications. I also have iBattery info, so whenever I plug in or unplug my device, a little pop-up window will show up that gives me some of my battery stats, such as the max capacity, the current capacity, and the number of charges you've done so far. I've already shown you iCleaner and iFile. Infinite Tweet lets me use TweetLonger within TweetBot, so it's for those tweets that are over 140 characters. This integrates that very well. Next is Messages Plus, which lets me compose iMessages or text messages from anywhere. So the gesture I use is three finger pinch. This works from anywhere. So that's kind of nice to have. I've already talked about my why. I have NC Fold, which lets me collapse different notification center sections here, as you can see. It's very convenient to have whenever you have a lot of different notifications from several different apps. It also supports showing more than 10 notifications at a time within each app. Next is Nitrous, which adds the JavaScript Nitro engine to any app instead of just system apps. I've already shown you ProTube. Spring to Mize, I showed you a little bit, but it adds a whole number of different things that you can do. You can change icon sizes, you can remove the page dots on your, spring or in your springboard, and things like that. Next is Swipe Selection Pro, which lets you swipe across the keyboard to move the cursor. So if I brought up the interface here, 
and just go into this text box and start typing. I can use the space bar to move the cursor, as you can see. I could also disable it by tapping the shift key three times. So you can see it doesn't work now. I can turn it back on and it works again. I can also select text like so and it works very well. Next up on the list is video pace, which lets me speed up video or audio playback. So usually when I watch YouTube videos on my iPhone, I watch it at twice the speed. That way I can watch twice as many videos in a certain amount of time. So a video session that might take 30 minutes to watch would just take 15 minutes. Wonderboard is pretty obvious. Zeppelin I mentioned at the beginning and I've already gone through 3G Unrestrictor. So that is essentially my entire setup. And the reason I did this video, because I wasn't planning on doing it before, was that I will be restoring to iOS 8.3 as soon as I finish this video. That's because I got an Apple Watch to try out for a couple weeks. That's my original intent. Within the 14 days, I'll go ahead and return it, and that'll be the end of that. Afterwards, if the jailbreak's not out by then, I'll have to just stick with stock iOS for a while, which will be really disappointing. I really do enjoy my setup. I've been with this setup for eight months now, and it's been really quick. Everything, for the most part, works really well. So it's a little disappointing that I'm going to have to give that up for probably a month. No idea when the next jailbreak is coming out, but hopefully once 8.4 drops, the jailbreak won't be too far beyond that. So that's finally it with this video. If you have any comments, questions, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon.